Hey everyone, this is me, Tracy, and I'm gonna do a reaction video. Today's video is <laughs> the craziest TV movie, the crazy movie is Project G1 and Z17. The video is Project G1 All Dash by Rootsy and Patsy Patsy and Gaming Channel. And even when these engines are going to try die and they are about to die, they death. But trains die? Yes, begin. Have you guys enjoyed the video? Loyalty, honor, respect. When you lose even one of those, you take something away from those around you. The ones you love, your friends. We let down those closest to us without ever realizing we've done so. The people that didn't leave work at night, they weren't the railways for the love of railways. They weren't silenced, they weren't subdued. They just didn't have anything to object to. By the time they realized there was a problem, it was too late. We didn't stifle them, we didn't walk them away, we didn't lie to them. We committed the worst sin of all. We just didn't listen. in their own way, both human and by all views. <laughs> Trucks, particularly the faceless ones, rarely have the brain capacity to retain long-term memory. They were the lucky ones. I can't imagine a worse hell than being a truck. Fortunately, most of them didn't live one. Biological organs exposure to the open world meant an increased risk of infection and slow, painful death. <laughs> Fitted with pneumatic joints, stabilizers, and supports, they were ready for the main event. Fused coaches were put into service straight away. Everyone was very excited. No one seemed to ask about where all the organic parts were in the coach. <laughs> all about those luxurious, expensive pink leather furnishings. I don't even want to tell you what they found in the toilets. For one set of twins, the link would go too far. Whilst unseen horrors were administered on dock, the doctors and specialists at Hit Logistics could observe in full detail the torture and an unbreakable bond with his twin was to tear Douglas apart. <laughs> Hit Logistics would also be seen as a welcome refuge from another. The destruction of the evidence was speeded up. Unnecessary engines were being incinerated quickly and brutal. Easy sign in the form, ticking the box, or waving a flag. The engines we knew and loved were murdered in the most efficient way possible. They'd spent 30 years together, just looking into each other's eyes, forgotten by us all, and as happy as any of us could ever hope to be. 
as Clarabelle was disposed of. No one but Diesel knew what happened to her twin, nearly 20 miles away. pounds of desiccated biofused matter. This location, the real mystery. And tending to this top secret site was the only engine in the UK still being illegally operated. Oh, we gotta do pretty much anything once. Uh, you know, a bit of a bit, bit of black. Yeah, 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 yeah. This undercover footage reveals how Ferdinand was being forced to work, controlled by his addiction to Welsh coal. We used Welsh coal to get the weaker engines started up, to give some engines a kick when they were struggling to get up in the morning. We never realised all the effects it was having on some engines. Here the coal, man. What are you looking at me for? Oh, let's all look at funny engine. Is that right? Let's all look at funny engine. Welsh coal acted as a narcotic on the engines, for long use would lead to addiction and dependency. <laughs> the logistics would lead to take Welsh coal research to its natural conclusion. High speed steam engines would be pushed to their limits on high doses of the coal. For the repairs, their solution would be barbaric. They dismembered him, taking away his wheels and opening him up. The butchers turned him into a steam generator. Shut off from all sensation, Smudger powered the mind for many years. Alone with his thoughts, he would slowly lose his mind. When business dried up, do you think they come back for Smudger? Did they hell? They were left there for years. Everyone had forgotten him. In a way, it would have been better for Smudger if he'd been forgotten forever. Sadly, for Smudger, salvation would arrive, but in the form of hit logistics. Professor Roof was still eager to find as much biofuse material as he could, but Smudger had changed all the time. Smudger had remained in the same place for nearly 30 years. His organic parts were no longer just part of a steam engine. They had become chef. Smudger and the shed were one and the same. They couldn't be removed. No, no, please, wait, no, please, no, God, no, 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 please, wait, no, no, wait, no, God, no, no, no! This will be the final act of hit logistics, closing down all their research and destroying evidence. Soon, there will be nothing left to even prove their existence. That was what they hoped. They didn't count on one final desperate act. Cranky had been driven mad by all the things he'd seen working for the government, but the worst thing was having to keep it quiet for all those years. Unfortunately, Cranky's genetic structure meant he couldn't turn around fully, not without breaking the entire circulatory system to his head. Effectively, he was condemning himself to a painful death. I believe Cranky knew the consequences, but if I that day... I don't believe he was evil, or that he wanted to kill anyone. He just wanted to show the world what the government was trying to cover up. He didn't know what was in there, or the damage he'd do. Diesel had veered into the now secured stasis container of Project G Stage 1. Opening it up and allowing the deprogrammed biofused matter to assimilate any matter it wished, and to take on any form it wished.
the site of thousands of tons of dead, desiccated biofuse matter, hidden from the outside world. A rich source of matter which would make Project G1 indestructible. <laughs> to be with its own kind. The last vestiges of Sodor's engines. It was trying to find peace. Realizing Project G1's destination and intent, the military provided it with what it was looking for. The last engine whose fate everyone had asked about for years. operations to try and reconstruct him as a human being, he had remained behind closed doors, unwilling, until now, to show the world the monster he had become. That wasn't the Thomas I knew. That wasn't an engine or a human. It were a creature, mutilated by surgeons and engineers alike. Unable to react to the outside world at this stage, Thomas was the last chance the military had to stop Project G1. Initiatives you've stalled, the jobs you've lost, 
the challenges to this island's human supremacy. Well, we've got a very special place for you here. Somewhere you can't open your big mouth or interfere anymore. And don't worry, Mr. Arley. You're among friends here. This is where everyone ends up once they've become troublesome. <laughs> Enjoy it and we'll see it on TV. We welcome.